<laughs> Look at your pension. You also have investments in Chinese companies. You also have Judy Papanella with Big Voice Media. I want to ask a couple of people some questions. What was your opinion of this wonderful debate? I think um, Governor Romney really proved that he was someone that was trying to work for the betterment of the country and the future of our country, whereas Obama has spent his time, instead of saying what good he could do for the country, he tried to bash Romney. So it's, he, he was very negative, and Romney showed promise and hope for the future. What was the one thing you took away from this entire debate? I'm voting for Romney. <laughs> Understood. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask some questions. What did you get out of this debate? What was the most important thing you take from it? Well, the most important thing I think is that we found out exactly what Obama has in store for us, and it's four more years of more of the same. I don't find any leadership with him. I don't feel confident. I don't think that he is going to lead this country towards either an economic um, recovery and I really don't feel safe under his practices. Thank you. Do agree. And you, would you like to say something? Well, now you got to see Romney, who he really is. And I think the American people have a choice. It's inevitable. It's got to be Romney. Otherwise, four more years of the same mess. Probably worse. Because it'll be four more years building up on the past four years of failure. So I think the American people are going to make a good choice. And it'll be Romney. I do hope so. Thank you. I'd like to get your opinion of the debate. What are you bringing out of it? I thought it was great. I mean, I feel that the truth came out. Uh, it's obvious who I am for, but I feel that President Obama had four years. He failed. He failed the economy. He, ha he failed in the financial sector. I worked in financial banking. That is non-existent any longer. He has taken this country down. And unfortunately, it, we can't allow him to have another four years. And I feel that Mitt Romney, Governor Romney, really was respectful and had the answers. And you don't, contra you don't contract someone's statement by saying, no, you're not going to do it. It's a statement. He said he wasn't going to raise taxes, but I keep saying you are going to raise taxes. What does that prove? That proves nothing. President Obama had his four years. I feel it's enough. And that's why I'm here tonight. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Would you like to say something? Yeah, I figured the American people actually looked at both debates and looked at them very closely. They'll realize that everything that President Obama is saying didn't come to fruition. So I think they should take a real good look at Governor Romney and see maybe he's the person for this job and not President Obama. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. What I'm loving is how everybody knows what they're talking about. This has been an interesting debate. I'd like to get your opinion of the debate. I think Romney did as well as he did in the first debate. Factual, to the point. I think the president was, was, you know, back, you know, basically stepping back and trying to defend himself. And, uh, you know, an incumbent president has to defend himself like that. I think that's a win for uh, the uh, challenger. Is there any specific thing that you're taking away from this? Any specific quote, action, issue that was discussed? Well, I think it was very clear that Obama has been uh, trying to deceive the American public, especially about the issues in Libya. And I thought it was extremely interesting that Romney was able to make a public stance to actually look down at the president, indicate to him with a simple stare that you're a liar. It was interesting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. A couple more individuals want to talk about it. What did you get from the debate? Uh, it sounded like Obama was very much on the offense defensive, and Romney held his own. I think Romney got the truth out, and Obama seemed to be just filling out a lo uh, his um, his speech. <laughs> he was just repeating his speech, just you know. Circular conversation. Yes. Right. I noticed that. It was good they let him debate. You know, uh, it was good she let him uh, debate. You know, and they each spoke up. You know? What was the one thing that you've taken out of this? The one thing I've taken out of this? 
Let's see. What did I take out of this? That oh, Romney is a businessman and can rebuild our country. Obama doesn't want to rebuild our country. He's had four years. Give the other guy a chance. Right? <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you. You want to say something? Like to say something? Uh, well, it's the, the same thing, pretty much, but uh, I think it's pretty much like the same thing. It's either uh, uh, helping out each other, and or there's the uh, just, you know, being independent. And, like, uh, and I think I should think Romney should also show emphasize more of his self-interest, more, more of his independence, too, because, uh, I mean, to see your own happiness. So yeah, I mean, uh, no one, no one, no one made, no one makes a, no, no one gave you your success. Your teachers don't, didn't give you your success. You only did that. If you graduated from college or high school, it's because of you, not because of your teachers. Very valid point. Thank you. Very valid point. Would you like to say something about? Yeah. Um, my frustration is that. Um, Obama acts like he's um, hasn't been running an office for four years. He's the incumbent. His record, that he had no plan. And we don't want more of this. This is ridiculous. More debt, more. And Romney has a plan that has actually worked. History shows that. And he's done it in Massachusetts with 87% Democrats. And I think he made it clear. And at the end, he had the last say, Obama, with the throwing of the 47%. I mean, I think it fell flat. I think Romney came so presidential, so man of, of a businessman. And, you know, he really called him to task about how he has investments in China. And he called him on things that this coddled president that never was vetted was called on, probably for the first time in his presidency. And to me, it's so refreshing. And it's about time that the media, and not 100%, you know, um, vet, you know, this in a way, he vetted what the media hasn't done. And he just looks so presidential, and he has a plan. And I'm not looking for a messiah. I'm looking for someone who's going to create jobs. And I'm not looking for a pastor either. So I want to encourage the Christians that are worried about being a Mormon. He's a God-fearing man that cares about life and cares about the sanctity of marriage and cares about... Um, the Constitution, which is religious liberty, and not forcing me as a woman um, to pay for someone else's abortion and contraception. There's going to be access to all that, if, even if Romney gets elected and him throwing that in, um, that Obama throwing that in to try to entice the woman. I'm a woman, and I'm a highly offended because I'm a conservative woman, and I'm proud of that, and I shouldn't pay for somebody else's abortion or contraception. If they want to do that, I don't agree with it. That's between them and God, but they should pay for it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, folks. Chris, what did you take from this whole wonderful debate? Uh, the debate the debate itself went great. Again, it was facts versus feelings, and the feelings was nothing but stuttering and miscommunication and talking in circles. Um, again, you know, Mitt did a better job. He had facts on his side, whereas the other guy literally had nothing. He made things up as he went. Um, sorry, go ahead. Well, I just want to also put something in here. I want to thank you for putting this together for everybody. 175 patriots in one room, quite loud a few times, including myself. But this was a wonderful opportunity to bring groups together for the correct reason. Thank you. Hey, uh, believe me, thank you guys. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I do and get you guys mobilized and, and you know, have you guys all, we're all fighting for the same thing. Fighting for change, fighting for you know the right ideals, and fighting for the American way, and that's why we're all here. You know, I want to give everyone the opportunity to get together, yell at a screen, and um, you know, work it out, and to show others that have never been to stuff like this before that we exist. There's a lot of people from Manhattan that didn't know there's actual conservatives in New York State, so it is it is something different. It's a different opportunity for people to, to take part in and bring the community the closer together. Thank you again. Chris. Thank you very much, Judy. Thank you. All right, Ray. I know that you were once a Democrat. Now, can you give me your spin on what just happened up there? Well, first of all, I think it was the best the press could ever say, you know, Matt, if they really, really stretch it, is it was a draw. I mean, obviously I'm partial, so I think Romney smacked him down pretty hard, and I'm sure the other side will spin it the other way. But more important, he more than held his own. He looked very comfortable up there, very, shall I say, presidential up there. And I think all the people in the middle who were looking for an alternative to Obama, who in the last debate when they shattered the myth of him being this evil, richy, rich guy, said, 
You know, I could see that guy in the White House. They didn't change their minds tonight. If anything, they had that opinion reaffirmed. I had one individual say that this was Obama's Waterloo. What's your thought on that? I don't know about Waterloo, but that look was magnificent. You know, when he looked at him and kind of said, what'd you say? Are you really telling the American people that? The, uh, the unsaid portion of that was, because we got tape, you know. <laughs> there was a little thing called tape, and that was just a flat out lie. And even Obama shut the hell up there. So that was just gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay, Nancy, what is your thoughts on what, just, what you just witnessed? Well, I thought that uh, Romney gave, I, I think he won, hands down, personally. Um, I think Obama was lying about a lot of the substance. Um, he kept repeating himself on things we've heard over and over and over and over. I, I don't think he brought any new things. And when he, especially when he was talking about um, how, how, give us something that the press has gotten wrong, he didn't really have anything, if you noticed. I mean, Romney at least was saying, you know, they're, they're saying I'm this and that's not who I am. Obama didn't. So I guess then we pretty much have him pegged uh, who he really is. I mean, that's my opinion. Um, I thought it was a um, very good debate. I thought both of them presented fairly well as opposed to the um, vice presidential debate, which I thought was really atrocious with Biden. But, um, you know, that's... I saw it as being a pres presidential performance oh, absolutely. by Romney. Absolutely. And a, absolutely. A I, think, I think that Romney um, presented himself with a lot of knowledge, class. Um, I think he had a lot of um, caringness come across, that he really does care about people. And the more stories I hear about how he presents himself um, in his private life, it just makes me really put my trust of my son and my family in his hands. So that's where my vote's going. I Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate it. All right. What is, what's your opinion of what just happened here? Oh, man. We, we just saw a smackdown of the mother of all smackdowns, okay? I mean, bam, bam, bam. I mean, one lie after another, but the most blatant was about Libya. Well, we know we know which one that was, but uh, it, it, it's game over, basically. But the media is going to spin this, big media, you know, NBC. Brian Williams, if you're watching this, you can eat my shorts, okay? Now, I'm asking you two this question specifically because you're young, okay? I'm the gray hair here. You guys are young. It's your future, not mine. What did you just take from this debate? Uh, it looked like Romney made a lot of good points on, uh, they brought up taxes and it seemed like Romney had a better plan for for taxes in the middle class and, you know, you know it looked like Obama didn't really have a good plan. I don't know, that's, you know. Are you guys afraid of where you're going? I mean, you've got school, a world starting off for you. I mean, I know I'm scared. I've got a 20 and a 16 year old. Yeah, all my friends who graduated school don't have jobs. They don't know what they're going to do. So, yeah, you know, there's nothing out there. Are you in the same position? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, do you, who do you think of the two candidates who's going to actually look out for your interests just by this debate alone? Romney? Uh, yeah, just by this debate alone, Romney. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Really do. Thank you. All right, Lawrence, what is your opinion of what you just saw? I was very pleased. I thought Mitt Romney spoke very eloquently, and he stood up whenever Obama used his usual BS about various topics. He just stood right up to him and uh, knocked back what he was saying, made his issues clear, made his positions clear, and I think Obama looked, uh, you know, usual foolishness, always, uh, you know, doing like I'm doing right now. He's stuttering of what he's trying to say, he doesn't know exactly what to say, and he said a lot of things just weren't true. And the main theme I keep seeing in the whole debate was that when Obama would say that we're going to do this, we're going to do this, I'm saying, why didn't you do it already? He had a Democratic Congress, both houses, supermajority, whatever the heck he wanted. He had all the time in the world. He could do whatever he wanted. And he's going to say what he's going to do. And Romney, I believe, will do the things he's going to, he said he's going to do, and I like what he's saying. I do agree with that. I just was waiting to hear one thing. What about the budget? Nobody mentioned the word budget. The Senate hasn't passed a budget in three years. It's a national disgrace. 
They keep skating on that. I wish Romney would pick that, bring that up. Please bring up the next election. I'm glad he mentioned, I'm glad the event, the thing in Benghazi came up tonight. Nobody talks about the American citizen who admittedly behaved terribly. He went over to wherever, Afghanistan or wherever, and got involved with the Taliban or whatever. It doesn't matter. He's an American citizen, and Obama had him killed with a drone. No due process, no nothing. Imagine if that had happened to George W. Bush, the, the, the firestorm of... Uh, of anger over that, but Obama does it, it's like, oh, just another dead guy, who cares? You know, he worries about the rights of terrorists who aren't American citizens, but he doesn't care about American citizens and their rights. He's totally backwards. I think Romney's a patriotic American, he'll fix all that. I liked a lot of the things that he said. I was very pleased with the immigration piece that he said. What was your thought on that? Yes, I am pleased with that because I think that's exactly right. It's not practical even. Forget about the moral issue. It's not practical for us to, to physically deport all the millions of illegal aliens here. But if you enforce the laws that make it hard for illegal aliens to get work, what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to leave. That's self-deportation. That's a humane way to handle the situation. And then, you know, if you're going to have... I do agree that if you have children of illegal aliens that came to this country and had nothing to do with the decision to come here illegally, something fair should be done about them to give them a chance to earn their way to citizenship. But people, adults who came here illegally, they don't deserve any break at all. The first thing they did when they came to this country was break all laws. They should be treated as criminals, in my opinion. There was one word. It's called earn. Right, earn. Earn their right. That's earn right. their way. That's right. Big difference in here, have. I was very pleased with that myself. So. Yes, I think that's right. And I think the distinction between the two is obvious. Obama's, he, he, he's been saying, again, same thing. Four years he's been in office. He said himself, uh, to get off on the economy now, he said if the economy isn't working within four years, he should have a one-term presidency. Well, he should have a one-term presidency, because look what we have. I don't think he should have had the first one. I agree with you 100%. We're stuck on that I believe that election day four years ago, our country lost its soul. That's how I put it. That Obama's victory, we lost our soul. But in a few weeks from now, we can get it back, start building it back. I like that thought there very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. T-shirt says it all, okay? What was your opinion of what just happened? What did you just see? I saw Obama get beat up. I loved it. I loved it. Mitt kept coming back at him and putting him in his place with facts, facts, facts. There's nothing else but the facts. So Obama was babbling. He was blah, 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 blah. Nothing came out. Nothing came out. The same old stuff. We need this. We need that. And he said absolutely nothing. Nothing for the future. Nothing to fix America. America's, if he wins, we're done. That's my opinion. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Get a boat and go to Brazil. <laughs> I don't think we're heading to Brazil, that's for sure. So that's how I feel. And uh, I'm very proud of my son, Chris Tremarkey and Amber. <laughs> Well, I, already said something to, I already said to Chris how great this event was, and I, we're it's all good. appreciative. It's really good. I think that did a great job. we need boots on the ground. Virginia's coming. Virginia is on the 27th. We absolutely need boots on the ground. We need to knock on everybody's doors. This is dire. If we don't do it, I don't know what's going to happen. And on the 3rd of November, right before the election, we have uh, Pennsylvania, and we have to get organized and do it. You know? Yep. Thank what's you. your one favorite statement that came out? Your one because I know there were a few. Oh my God. When he, oh my God, my favorite statement. I was writing so fast that I think I forgot. When he got him about Libya mm -hmm. and he slammed him against the wall, I thought that was great. When he came out about uh, China and said that he had investments, I was screaming because I didn't know that Obama had money in China. That's why he's making deals with China because he's getting richer and richer and richer and we have no idea. That was the best one. He exposed him. I wrote on the internet, busted. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was the, my favorite, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. It. I love, love you. You can keep that on there. My black. All right, Eric, you were the last one to be interviewed. What was your opinion of everything you just saw tonight? In the first debate, the momentum shift and shifted in the race. The question tonight was whether Obama would say anything to reverse the momentum. He's still ahead in many polls. He's still ahead in many of the so-called battleground states. I don't think he said anything to reverse the trend. At best, this might have been a draw. And in that case, you have to think, is the momentum accelerating away from Obama, or is it simply stopping? Is it now sort of in a, a toss-up uh, state of mind? 
That's going to be the question. We're still six days away from the third and final debate, which is next week in Boca Raton. We have to see what happens there. As we speak now, we're 21 days away from the election. After the third and final debate, we'll have 14 full days to go. Uh, and it's a real question. This is going to be a very tight race, not just nationally, but in various individual states. One thing I can say tonight, uh, there was a new poll that came out in the state of New Jersey. 783 likely voters were polled. Romney is now trailing among so-called definite voters by 5.6 percent. That is a, a race that is really narrowed. Uh, the race in New Jersey had been as wide as 14 points. Even one had a 17-point gap. So that's narrowing. And among certain demographics, the bottom is falling out of Obama's support. So his, his remaining support is now concentrated among uh, African Americans, Hispanics, single women, uh, and people under the age of 45. But as you get older, uh, it, it, the support is even among white voters. There's a clear advantage uh, to Romney among men. There is a clear uh, advantage again to Mitt Romney. If you were to say one thing or one quote that you can pull out of this, what would be the one, one most definitive thing you, you're pulling from this whole debate? The best phrase that Mitt Romney used tonight was trickle down government. Again, that's been packaged from the first debate. I think that was very effective. Uh, in terms of what, what Barack Obama said, now again, he's playing to his audience. So if you're a Democrat, you like this phrase. If you're a conservative, this will really rankle you and it'll really upset you. But when he talks about your fair share, talking about using anything that, that's a derivative of the word fair or fairness, he is playing to his base. And that's as, as angry as it'll make us, that's very effective for his base. And the way he closed the debate tonight, he used these phrases, these loaded code words. And un unfortunately for, for our side, I think he was very effective. He ended this debate tonight on a good note for him. I did notice he likes to use the expression middle class versus middle income. He constantly is, is trying to separate the American people and classes and talk about different races, religions, and putting people into categories. I noticed that Romney wasn't doing that. Did you see that in tonight's debate? Barack Obama is on fumes in terms of his rhetoric. He is running out the clock. He was running out the clock tonight with almost every answer and statement he gave. He was elongating his syllables. He was being very deliberate in his response. And this is a trend that was in the first debate and in the second debate. This is not how he speaks when he's doing his stump speech before a friendly audience. He is in trouble. He's simply hoping he has the lead when the clock hits zero. But, and, and quite frankly, we've got 21 days to go. If we had two months to go and he was in this position, he would be in severe trouble. Uh, so it, it's a case of running out the clock. Will he win? And, and, and the only thing now is this is a turnout election in, in most of the country. But so many states are now in play that it's really changed. Do you think we're going to do it in New York? Change the color a little bit from that radical blue? Maybe a little purple? Dare I say red? I don't want to give away certain secrets that some of us are doing in terms of Republican strategy, but there are some down ticket races that I think are now going to be much more competitive, and there might be some surprises. I just can't give away uh, the boat just yet on that. Oh, I would never want anyone to give away the secrets. Not in any manner, shape, or form. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, folks, this is Judy Pep. As I say to everybody, I'm with Big Voices Media. I'm a member of Conservative Society for Action. Very glad to have had this opportunity to be here and interview all these wonderful people. Get out and vote. Don't let this day go by. Thank you.